Welcome back everybody, this is Mr. Navarrete, and today I'll be going over Hess's Law homework number one. So, let's get started. For number one, it says, consider the following reaction, we're C going into D, and we are told that our enthalpy for that reaction is 20 kilojoules. We can use that information to find the enthalpy change for the following reactions. So, for 2C into 2D, well that's just going to be twice as much of our original reaction, so we can just multiply our enthalpy by 2, so we get 40 kilojoules for that reaction. For B, it is now going in the reverse direction, so if it needed 20 kilojoules, now it's going to release 20 kilojoules. For C, well that's just going to be twice as our original and in the reverse direction, so 2 times what we got for B, so negative 40 kilojoules. D is going to be 3 times as much in the reverse direction, so that's going to release 3 times as much energy, so negative 60 kilojoules. And for E, well that's going to be half as much as our original, so now it's going to need 10 kilojoules. For number 2, we're given the reaction of 2 moles of ozone into 3 moles of oxygen gas, and we know that it's going to release 1300 kilojoules. So, if we were to go in the opposite direction, well, instead of releasing 1300 joules, it's going to need 1300 kilojoules. If we multiplied our original reaction by 2, well, it's going to release twice as much energy, so it'll release 2600 kilojoules. If we take our reaction and divide it by 2, well, it's going to release half as much energy, so negative 650 kilojoules. Now, if we were to reverse the reaction for C, instead of releasing 650 kilojoules, well, now it's going to require 650 kilojoules. And lastly, if we multiply our original reaction by 3, well, we're going to release 3 times as much, so we're going to release 3,900 kilojoules. For 3, we are given the two reaction steps for the dimerization of nitrogen dioxide. So here, we are going to have to either flip some reactions in order to get our final one there. Looking at what we're given, well, I have the nitrogen dioxide as a product in the first reaction. I know that I'm going to have to flip that reaction, allowing me to have my nitrogen dioxide as one of my reactants. By doing that, my enthalpy, instead of requiring 67.7 kilojoules, will release 67.7 kilojoules. With the second step, since my dinitrogen tetraoxide is on the product side, I don't have to do anything to it. So I'm just going to bring that down. And my enthalpy for that one is just going to stay the same, 9.8 kilojoules. This is the part where we're going to check to make sure that we actually get the reaction that we're looking for. My nitrogens are going to cancel. Two moles of oxygen are going to cancel. All I'm left with is my two moles of nitrogen dioxide and my one mole of dinitrogen tetraoxide. So, adding my enthalpies together, I get an enthalpy of the reaction of negative 57.9 joules. So it's going to release 57.9 joules. For number four, we are given the reaction steps to create sulfur dioxide. So looking at my first step, it says solid sulfur and oxygen as a reactant. So I'm just going to keep that one as is, just bringing that down. So my enthalpy for that step would just be negative 395.2 kilojoules. For the second step, my sulfur dioxide is a reactant, so I'm going to have to flip that reaction. So by doing that, I change my enthalpy from releasing 99.1 kilojoules to requiring 99.1 kilojoules for it to happen. Now I can see what species are going to cancel. I have sulfur trioxide on opposite side, so those will cancel. For the oxygens, well, I have a half. And on this side, I have three halves. So three halves minus one half is two over two. So it's just going to give me that one oxygen that I need. So this one will cancel. This one will be two over two. So just writing everything else that I have left over. I have my solid sulfur, one mole of oxygen gas, and sulfur dioxide, which is exactly what we wanted. Adding my enthalpies together, I get an enthalpy for the reaction of negative 296.1 kilojoules. For number five, we are given both steps, and this is the enthalpy that we want to find. So looking at the reactions, 
I have my nitrogen, my oxygen molecules as, as a reactant. So I'm just going to bring that one down. I'm not going to change it. So the enthalpy for that reaction would stay the same, 66.4 kilojoules. For the second reaction, I am actually going to reverse this reaction. That way I can cancel out my nitrogen dioxide since that's nowhere in my product. So reversing that one, it's going to cause my enthalpy to switch. So it's going to now require 114.1 kilojoules. Looking at what species are going to cancel, I have the two nitrogen dioxide molecules that will cancel. Here, this oxygen molecule will cancel out one of them. So I'm going to end up with the nitrogen molecule plus one oxygen molecule is going to give me two nitrogen monoxide. Adding those enthalpies together, I get a change of 180.5 kilojoules, but that's not what the problem is asking us for. We actually solve for twice as much. This wants half a mole of nitrogen and oxygen. So I'm just gonna divide my reaction that I got by two. Now I have the reaction that we're looking for. So then I'm just gonna divide my enthalpy by two which will give me an enthalpy of the reaction of 90.3 kilojoules. For number six, we want to find the enthalpy change of this reaction. So just looking at both steps, uh, let's see what can cancel out. Well, I have one of my zinc sulfides here. Those will cancel. And that's exactly the reaction that we're looking for. We have the zinc solid, the solid sulfur, the two oxygen gas molecules, those are all in my reactants, and it's going to produce one zinc sulfate. Okay. So just adding both of my enthalpies here, I get an enthalpy of the reaction of negative 982.9 kilojoules. Now we're going to tackle one that's going to take a little bit more time and a bit more thinking, but it's not as scary as it looks. So we want to find the enthalpy of the reaction between hydrogen gas, chlorine gas to produce two hydrogen chloride molecules. We are given our three steps. How can we rearrange them in order to create the reaction that we are looking for? For the first step, it's the only one that has HCl as a reactant and I need HCl to be a product. So I know that I'm going to have to flip that reaction. Okay. Now my second reaction has the ammonia on the product side. I need it to cancel with the one that I just flipped. So I am also going to be reversing our reaction number two. But now here comes the issue where I have one ammonia and I have two moles of ammonia here. So what I'm going to do is just multiply my first reaction by two that way these two moles of ammonia are going to cancel there. And all I'm going to be left with, or at least to worry about now, is going to be the nitrogen and the hydrogens canceling them out. So the enthalpy for my first reaction, since I reversed it and multiplied it by two, the enthalpy for that reaction will be 352 kilojoules. And for the second one, since I also reversed it, it's going to be positive. 92.22 kilojoules. Now for the third reaction, looking to see if I need to make any changes. Well, the nitrogens will cancel. I have three hydrogens here, so I'm only going to be left with one. My ammonias will cancel. My ammonium chlorides will cancel. So all I'm going to be left with is one mole of hydrogen gas one mole of chlorine gas, and two moles of hydrochloric acid gas. So since I know I didn't make any changes to it, my enthalpy for that reaction is just going to be the original one as before, so negative 628.86 kilojoules. Adding everything that we have so far, I get the reaction that I need. And adding my enthalpies will give me a reaction enthalpy of negative 184.6 kilojoules. So for number eight, again, we're given three steps. We are told that we want to find the enthalpy of the reaction between two moles of nitrogen gas, five moles of oxygen gas, 
to make two moles of dinitrogen pentoxide. So looking at each of our three steps, the way that I looked at it was, well, I have nitrogen, oxygen already in my reactant side for my third equation. I need to cancel out that nitric acid molecule. The only way that I can do that is by flipping or reversing this reaction. That way I can get the dinitrogen pentoxide from a reactant to the products where it should be. By doing that, I'm going to make the water molecule a product. And the only way to cancel my water molecules is to have them on opposite sides. So I'm going to have to flip my first equation. So to show you what I did, flip the first equation. That way I have the water as my reactant one hydrogen gas molecule as a product and half a mole of oxygen gas there as well. So that's going to change my enthalpy of the reaction to be from negative to positive. For the second one, I also flipped it. So now I'm going to have the nitric acid molecules producing the dinitrogen pentoxide and water. So that'll also change its enthalpy from positive to negative. So 76.6 kilojoules. And lastly, for the last one, since I have two moles of nitric acid, I know that I'm going to have to multiply my third reaction by two. So multiplying that one up by two, I'm going to multiply my enthalpy also by two. So then that'll be negative 348.2 kilojoules. Now we can see what cancels. Two moles of nitric acid will cancel. The hydrogens will cancel. Uh, the waters will cancel and then I'm just going to subtract half a mole of oxygen gas from my three moles of oxygen gas here. So I end up with one mole of nitrogen gas plus five halves of a mole of oxygen gas is going to give me one mole of nitri dinitrogen pentoxide. So that enthalpy is going to be 14.2 kilojoules, adding these three together. But again, that's not what the question is asking us for. We made half of what we needed. So I'm just going to multiply my enthalpy here by two. Since that'll give me two moles, it'll cancel, get rid of my two there. And I'm going to make two moles of dinitrogen pentoxide. So I'm going to make or have an enthalpy of 28.4 kilojoules. For number nine, we are given our three reactions. We are told this is what we want to find. So let's see how we can manipulate our reactions. Just as a placeholder, I'll add those there. Looking at my third reaction, that's the only one that has nitrogen dioxide as a product. That's where it needs to be. So I can just keep that one as is. No changes to it. So I know that its enthalpy is going to stay the same. Negative 199 kilojoules. My second reaction has the monatomic oxygen as a product, but I need it as a reactant. So I'm just going to write it as to my oxygen gas, just reversing it. So that'll give me an enthalpy of negative 495 kilojoules. Now I have my monatomic oxygen as a reactant. And last but not least, I have this ozone that I need to get rid of. So my first reaction has it as a reactant. So I will flip that reaction. So it'll be 3O2 gas into two ozone gas. And the enthalpy of that reaction is gonna be positive 1300 kilojoules. Trying to figure out what's gonna cancel is gonna be a little tricky because you have a bunch of things that don't necessarily match up. I have two moles of ozone, but I only have one here. I have three moles of oxygen, but I have two over here in total. I have two moles of monatomic oxygen, but I only need one. It's going to take a bunch of time with some coefficients if you try to at least multiply everything all together. What I'm going to do instead is if I multiply this one by a half, instead of having two oxygens, I'm only going to have one. And instead of having just one O2 molecule, I'd have half of one. So then my enthalpy would not be a negative 495. Instead, it would be negative 248. 
for the third one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to multiply this whole thing by a half. So now it'll be 3 over 2 oxygen molecules, and this would be 2 over 2, or just one ozone molecule. My enthalpy, instead of being 1,300 kilojoules, would be 650 kilojoules. Now let's see what cancels. Well, the ozone molecules would cancel. I have half of an oxygen molecule, and I have one whole one there. So that's going to be 2 over 2. So adding those together would be 3 over 2. And I just so happen to have 3 over 2 oxygen molecules on this side. So those will cancel. All I'm going to be left with is 1 mole of nitrogen monoxide and 1 mole of monatomic oxygen will give me 1 mole of nitrogen dioxide gas. Adding my enthalpies together, I'm going to get an enthalpy of the reaction of 203 kilojoules. Lastly, for number 10, it's going to require some of the same thinking that we did or used in the last problem. So looking at my first reaction, it's the only one that has the hydroxide as a product. But here I have two moles versus the one mole that I want. So I'm just going to divide that portion by a half. So I'm going to get half a mole of oxygen, half a mole of the hydrogen gas to make one mole of my hydroxide. Going to divide my enthalpy by two. So it'll be 39.0 kilojoules instead of the 77.9. For my second reaction, since I need to cancel out the oxygens, I know that I'm going to have to flip it. And since I have now half a mole of oxygen instead of one, I can also divide that one by two. So flipping it and dividing it, I get one mole of monatomic oxygen into half a mole of the oxygen gas, which will give me an enthalpy of negative 248 kilojoules, which is half and the opposite sign of the 495 kilojoules. And lastly, for the third step, I'm going to flip it as well. That way I can cancel out my hydrogens and divide it by two. Doing that will give me an enthalpy of negative 218 kilojoules instead of the positive 435.9. Seeing what cancels, well, the half molecules of hydrogen gas will cancel. The half molecules of the oxygen gas will mo molecules will cancel. So all I'm left with is the monatomic oxygen, monatomic hydrogen, to create one mole of my hydroxide. Adding our enthalpies together will give me a change of negative 427 kilojoules. And that's it. This homework might have been a little bit tougher than the other ones. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Here to help. But other than that, stay safe, and I'll see y'all next time.